Hey, my name is Shanshan. I sell art on shanshan.co. Today we're going to react to Katie Jobling. So Katie is a landscape painter. She does kind of seascapes, flower paintings, and that's kind of her primary focus on YouTube. And she's been around quite a while, like five, six years at least. So her channel has been around a while. I've seen her channel quite a bit. Yeah, she's kind of a well-versed uh, YouTuber, so let's take a look at her channel. So if you look, so at the top she has kind of her popular uploads, which is smart. You kind of want to have that first so people can just, the most coolest stuff you have. Um, she has painting tutorials. She's repeating a little bit of the first one, so maybe she might want to filter this manually, but um, this is fine. I have some of the same issues with some of mine. They sort, so I kind of sort manually the popular uploads so that they don't populate across. Um, she has silly art tips. She's added these little emojis to the title, which is really cool. Uh, and then she has her generic uploads, uh, artist tips and tricks. I have a cha similar channel, similar playlist, and the artist life and speed painting. So everyone's done a lot of speed paintings. Now that's not popular, but last year or so it was definitely in. So let's take a look at the very first painting video. This is how to paint a rose in acrylics. Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Today I want to show you guys how to paint a rose in three easy steps. So this is really nice. She kind of shows the painting right off the bat so you know what it's about. You got the finished painting. And she's just breaking it down to the really easy steps of the way to paint a rose. Anybody can do this. We're going to be using three simple colors that you get with all paint sets and they are also super easy to pick up at a craft store and something that looks really difficult can be really easy to do when it's broken up into stages it's all about painting with direction intent and patience so i think the colors she's using she didn't mention them so i'll just mention them it's probably titanium white she's probably using a cad red ultramarine blue and a cad yellow i think so that's just a guess. So the first step is going to be the base gradient. This is going to be the beginning layer that we build on all the other layers. So to do this, I'm going to take some of my red, mix it with a bit of yellow to keep it really warm. And I'm going to use this in the center of my rose. So I'm going to start from the center and build my way out, almost using my brush to build like the petal strokes. So for today's tutorial, you can use a reference. So if you have a rose near you in real life, feel free to use that, um, but also there will be a link in the description box to the reference photo I'm using today, so you can download that, have it on a different device next to you, so you can keep referring back to that. So if you look where she started, it's kind of like the classical third line, so <clears throat> one of the common tricks of artists is they do third lines to divide the canvas into thirds on the top and horizon, so in the beginning of the rose is kind of a little bit below the middle, so not exactly in the third lines but the, the vertical line is definitely on the third line. So that's a really great trick to solve why a painting doesn't look good or right. That, so if you do those third lines, the eye finds that very appeasing, appealing because it's the golden ratio. And I'm just gonna go outwards to about the middle of the rose. So I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. So she's adding lighter colors, looks really nice. Obviously she probably explained it, but I'm just kind of skimming this through. She has really chill music to kind of you know, relax you. <clears throat> it's kind of cool. She's making her own purple out of the red and the blue, which you can obviously do. Now you, you don't, don't really... want to do this too much because we don't want to end up with a dark purple rose, unless that's what you're going for. This is just to create shadows. But yeah, you don't obviously need to buy violet. You can just make it yourself. Okay, so next we're going to add a little bit of white to that same mixture. We're going to do the same as before and start to build that on the outer layers of the petals as well. So I think she's time lapsing the mixing. She probably makes it slower, but maybe she makes it faster than this. So I think we get the point of that. Let's skip ahead a little bit. All the way out to the edge, building up those little bits of petals and depth so that it draws your eye in. So let's really punch you with a pure red now. Okay, now I've done that with a dark red. So I'm going to add a little bit of red and white together. And this I'm going to use for the highlights of the petals. So 
you know you get the shadows in between the petals and then as a petal is coming out you get that highlight where the light just hits it so now I'm going to start building these up in a very very similar way and sometimes these highlights work best when they're next to a shadow because the contrast between them really pops Alright, so let's skip ahead a little bit here. Just gonna add a second uh, rose. And now that last flower has dried, I'm just gonna go and add in a few little details. So she's time lapsing this, it's a lot faster than before, it was more real time. But then she's kind of time lapsing to make the video faster. And that is today's painting. I really hope that you guys enjoyed seeing this painting come together. And I really hope that you guys had a little go yourself. It's interesting because you left the edges very, very, very rough. Uh, the rose itself is pretty rough as well, but it's kind of painterly. But I wouldn't leave the outer edges like that, I would paint them down a little bit more. But yeah, so, but I mean, it's a style, you know, so I think it's pretty good. Let's go into the next video. All right, this one is called Acrylic Paintings Do's or Don'ts Be a Better Painter. Here is 10 painting tips that will help improve your practice as an artist and help you be a better painter. I've already got a 10 simple acrylic painting tips, so if you've not checked that out, go and watch that after this video. So anyway, let's get into the tips here. Tip number one is to practice painting in black and white so that you can improve your value and form. When we use color, it can start to get very confusing. So that's a really smart tactic. I know a friend of mine, he did an MBA and the whole first year was just painting black and white to really get the values down. I don't know if that was necessary at the MBA level. They make more sense in the BFA level and then the masters, I assume you kind of already know that, but it is a really great way to kind of perfect your understandings of values. So we'll skip ahead a little bit. And all that sort of nitty gritty stuff that as soon as color gets involved can just get very confusing. So once you've built up that understanding of value properly, then you can move into color. To, let's skip ahead a little bit here. The composition. That's one of my best tips. Tip number three. Uh oh, we is missed the best tip. Skip out your painting <laughs> before you paint it. But you don't have to use a pencil. You can even use paint, and that's what I like to use. So give that a go the next time you're painting. Just use a very watered down version of the paint that you're using and it will dry super fast. Yeah, and you can just use thick paint too, but yeah, I would definitely water it down. You don't want to waste paint because you're going to go completely over it, but it definitely helps to, um, you can grid it out like she did a grid line, uh, the two thirds, like I mentioned before, the golden ratio, and kind of put that together. Tip number four is to have a creative warm up. Just do some quick fire sketches with even a ballpoint pen or some ink and a paintbrush and just do five minute, a three minute or even a 30 second drawing just to fire up those creative juices and get you in that creative zone. Tip number five is to save photos and references that you love. So that can be in real life, whether that's a bit of a magazine clipping. Yeah, and this is a really cool idea. This is very old school because you can put it on the wall and display it. So that's a really cool idea because it's always in your mind. Um, a lot of people also put uh, like on Pinterest and put um, tables together, but then you might forget to look at it. Like that's my case. I put together really cool albums together on Pinterest, but I just forget to look at them. So if you have it on the wall, it's definitely, you're going to be top of mind a lot better. So let's skip ahead a little bit. I just want to quickly say, if you guys enjoy my videos, please hit that like button, subscribe, come and say hi in the comments. It really, really helps the YouTube algorithm at time ahead. to learn how to draw properly there's tons of videos on YouTube and everything and that will massively improve your paintings unless you're Jackson Pollock and then just go for it tip number seven is to use a reference photo okay so we got a reference photo almost every modern painter that's realist but uses a modern uh, reference painter to start with later they might kind of improvise and make their own painting um, I know a friend of mine Jose Trujillo kind of does this I don't think he uses any reference paintings anymore but and when you're starting, it really helps to get those colors right. And But you don't want to be true, true, true to it. A lot of people just copy straight up the paint, the photo. I wouldn't do this. I would kind of interpret the photo. Like you might change it a little darker, a little warmer colors. You might take items out. You might add items in. 
and just kind of use that as a reference. You don't have to stick strictly to the photo. That's my take on that. So think about the canvas size that you're working on. If it's a huge painting, then you're going to want some big brushes. Tip number nine, which is one of my biggest tips and one of the most important, I think, that is to remember that there is always an ugly stage. And the other cool thing, if you'll notice on this video, she's actually on the third lines herself. She set up the camera, so her, what is it, this eye? <laughs> I think that's the uh, left eye, is right at the third line, and her eyes are basically at the third line. So she has a really nice composition just from the way she set up the camera, which is really smart. The cameras nowadays will, you know, offer you to do that. You can even just do it on your iPhone. You can set up the grid lines, and then it'll kind of do that for you. So that's a really smart way to get your video looking cool, and then she has her painting, of course. Um, so yeah, she's talking about the ugly stage. Any painting goes through in the middle stages. It might be close to the end or whatever, but it just gets ugly, and you just have to paint through that. Every painting I've done, there has been an ugly stage that is about 70% of the way through the painting that I go, no. I have spent so much time on this painting, and I hate it. It looks terrible. It's past the point of resurrection <laughs> but honestly keep pushing through keep going with it keep putting your heart and soul into it and you'll eventually turn around that corner and start to love it again so that's that let's skip ahead a little bit so tinting the canvas with a, like a medium like gray or some people use a burnt sienna or burnt umber that can just help us differentiate the values properly so there we have it, my 10 simple painting tips. So I think this is a really good video. I would definitely encourage you to see the full version of this versus my kind of chopped up version. <laughs> Poor Katie. <laughs> I just chopped the hell out of her own video. I mean, she normally I kind of cut it better, but I'm just cutting it really short here. Sorry, Katie. <laughs> I think you understand, right? Uh, this is acrylic painting for beginners ocean. Hi guys, and welcome to today's video. We'll be painting an acrylic painting of the sea today using only two colours. So feel free to paint along, it'll be great to have you paint with me, or if you'd rather just relax with a cup of tea or coffee and watch the painting come along. So in today's acrylic painting, we'll be learning different techniques like colour mixing, blending, and how to use a palette knife. And if you enjoy these types of videos, please hit that like button and subscribe and leave a comment. So that's a really crucial thing if you ever do YouTube ads, you always, or YouTube videos, you always want to have this kind of ring the bells, like, and blah, blah, blah. Unfortunately, you have to add that to your videos. It's really stupid, but it definitely helps the algorithm. <laughs> so if you're a smaller channel, you never get to the top. But if you have people actually subscribe and hit the bell once in a while, that'll definitely help. So that's why she's doing that. Uh, I find it super annoying to have to do it, but whatever it is, what it is. I've got a golden, a Windsor and Newton, a and a Liquitex. So just use whatever you've got lying around. That's absolutely fine. And the brush I'm going to be using is my favourite brush at the moment, which is the One Stroke in the Galleria range by Windsor and Newton. So this mm. is a flat brush, which I definitely recommend for doing seascapes. Interesting. And I've just got a jar of water. Yep. And a towel, handy. I would recommend two tubs of water. So what you can have is you fold them up clean and you wash 99% of the brush in the first one and the last one's kind of keep clean. And what that'll do is allow you to get your brushes really clean. The dirty water you can just use for mixing. You can actually mix all the paints with this dirty water. But it'll get your brushes really ultra clean with two small jugs of water. That's kind of how I recommend it. Okay, so first of all, just damp your brush. And if you've got one, you can just lightly spray the canvas with some water. But don't worry if you don't have that, that's absolutely fine. And first of all, we're going to pop in the sky. So take some ultramarine. So one thing I would say that she's using a paper palette to kind of mix her um, colors. So that's kind of useful. You never have to clean it up. So it's just a faster way to work. I wouldn't encourage people to use this. I would get glass myself. Glass is really easy to clean up. Um, you can just spray it down with water at the end. And it'll make all the paint that's dried kind of wet again. And you can just easily scrape it off with a razor blade and then you can reuse that palette over and over again. I mean, I just find it super wasteful to use paper. So I would not recommend this at all. Some people use paper plates as well, but again, it's very wasteful material, I, I find. And some white. So for the first layers, you might want quite a bit of water to make it really viscous onto the painting surface. I'm just using a canvas here. 
So she's painting the edges, which is uh, one style people do. It's, there's there's a couple schools of thought. One school of thought is paint all the edges. It looks clean for the um, when you sell it. And I think I agree in person. It kind of looks nice. I just paint it black. That's another alternative. You just paint the edges black. It's simpler, faster, and it looks kind of like it's framed already when it's not framed. Three is you don't paint it all. You just leave it white. I've seen people do this. They sell online primarily. And as long as you sell a lot, people are not going to mind. But you know, then they ha they absolutely have to get a frame after that, right? It's not going to look good. And you can also go ahead and do the top and sides if you want to. Got to get rid of the captions. So she's just using um, aquamarine and white, which is fine for a very simple understanding how to paint. But in reality, what you want to do is calm that down with probably a burnt sienna and uh, do an off color blue and white. And so what that'll do is once you add kind of the clouds and you add like the highlights, the highlights should be pure white, but in general, the clouds should be some mix off color. And so that'll allow you to, it'll make the sky pop way better than this. This is good for just understanding, but it's not the best way to paint the sky. Let's skip ahead a little bit. So she's blending in the white in the background, give it a little more texture, which is really cool. Use that feeling of like those distance clouds. Let's skip ahead a little bit. So this, you could almost just use a ruler. Um, it looks good just painting by hand like this, but I would just get a ruler, it looks fine. No reason to kind of have an imperfect straight line. See, that's going to be imperfect a little bit, so. But as long as she's cool with it, right? <laughs> so she's going to paint the edges. Let's... So the sand is really a nice color, I think. Um, she's really good with that. And she's just using the blue, orange, and white, so it's pretty impressive. You get this kind of neutral gray color, gray sand color that's just a little warm but not much so very cool there let's skip ahead a little bit that's right, quite so. dark so I'm gonna add a little bit of white in so that it's not as dark as the horizon so she covered up the horizon which is uh, okay I guess and I'm going to take this on the edge of my palette knife like that and then I'm going to just take it across and this is just going to be adding some depth into the ocean it's interesting because I don't think the waves would be per straight like that so this isn't a bad technique, but it's kind of a little bit off in the sense that the waves okay. would be uneven on and the beach. you can beach. wipe that off onto a paper towel. But it's a painting, right? It'll have to be perfect. Let's scroll out a little bit. And then taking the white on the back of my palette knife, Let's white, scroll out here. just to sort of blend that out. So she's kind of working in the clouds a little more. <sighs> Now I think this is a pretty good painting for just using three basic colors. Um, it is nice in the clouds if you mix some kind of oranges and browns to kind of give it really interesting layering. The clouds, that's how I do my clouds. I'll have a little bit of kind of gray white, kind of almost pure black and white kind of mixes. And then I'll have obviously the blue mixes, but you want the blue gray, you want an orange gray, you want maybe even a purple sometimes, it's really cool. So you can do a lot of different textures to the clouds that more than just this kind of simple approach. This works uh, because a lot of days you have a really clear, clear sky and you just have white and, white and gray kind of clouds. You can do this simple approach, which is a nice way to do it. Let's skip ahead a little bit. So she's adding more of the waves. So there we go. I think that painting is now finished. So I just want to say a massive thank you to you guys for following along with that tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget... So that's a really calm beach scene. I think it's pretty good. Let's go into the next... Oh, that is the last one. You know, I think her channel is pretty good. It's really good focus on just the beach scenes and roses. So only a couple of different themes in her YouTube channel, which is great for kind of focusing up the algorithm and get to the top. She has a lot of different painting tutorials. She has a huge base, right? 354,000. So it's a pretty big channel. She's really had a lot of success growing her channel. So hats off to that. I think it's because of that tight focus around the waves primarily and a little bit of roses, but 
Not too many subjects is a really good way because then people just, they like waves, they're gonna end up on this channel. You like roses, you might end up on this channel, but you're not gonna get like animals and barns and all different type of landscapes, it's not gonna be here. Uh, Cause if you do a lot of different themes then it's kind of chaotic, people don't understand it and the algorithm doesn't understand it, right? But if you just do waves like she's done, then the algorithm understands and just kind of sends you people that like wave paintings or ocean paintings, sea paintings. So from that perspective, it's a really great way to focus that channel. And that's probably one of the reasons why it's so popular is just she had a tight focus in the beginning and just kind of rode that, rode that wave literally um, to the top. So hats off to Katie. Hopefully you guys like it. Uh, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe, you can subscribe below. And I'll see you on the next Artist React video.